Ah, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, thanks very much for coming along. It's great to have the support both for Tour Rakau, but I see a lot of you with your um, uh, yellows on, so that means you're coming to the conference, so that's great to have you all here. Um, I always start with this slide. Um, I think it's actually quite good that um, it kind of helps with the fact that you know I'm a bit schizophrenic in my, in my own life, that I actually have a split personality of I work for Forest Industry Safety Council, but we have the Safe Tree website. So that's our um, the public focused brand and website that where everything that we develop within the council goes out onto the Safe Tree website and it's available for anyone to use. So it's there for forestry, but we do have other uh, sectors actually picking things up as well. Now it's getting a bit late in the day, so I thought I'd just give you a bit of a laugh. Some of you might have seen this picture before. There we go. Um, so in a previous role, um, my team selected this avatar for me, which is Princess Fiona. Not in the posh green frock, but with the little kilt on. Um, and I kind of thought, well, I might as well, you know, just take it on board and embrace it. But it came about because it sort, you know, I sort of said to me, you know, why would you think a small Scottish person, you know, five foot nothing is a scary woman? And they went, because that's what we see. So, um, so that's me. So I embrace that one. Um, but what's the Forest Industry Safety Council all about? So it's not just about safety. Um, fundamentally, what we want is a safe, sustainable and professional sector. And that's actually going to help us from the point of view of being able to attract people, retain them, um, help with the, our social license to operate, what the public thinks of forestry as a whole. So as I say, we're called the Safety Council, but these are all the things that we're actually working together um, with all our stakeholders to do for the forestry sector. And in terms of stakeholders, um, it's industry, WorkSafe, ACC work with us um, and the union, so we're a tripartite body. Um, so strategy on a page, I do not expect you to be able to see all of that or read all of that, but you'll get a copy of it. Um, really the stylized tree in the middle um, talks about what we do. Um, three really key things, leadership, risk management and engagement. Um, it's no real... Um, so, so that's very deliberate from the point of view of that's what the legislation said in 2015. And today's actually the anniversary of um, the Pike River incident, which led to the new, the new act. And that act focuses on those three principles. So we deliberately focus on those, but also capability. Um, and that's of people that work within forestry and also the businesses. And the performance pieces, we look to see how well we're actually doing as a sector. Um, so we're doing better in terms of serious harm. That's trending down. Unfortunately, we still top the league in um, New Zealand for fatalities in a sector. So it's an area we still have to really focus on and improve on. Um, but our overall approach to health and safety. Um, so my background is I actually spent 20 years in the UK as a frontline inspector. Um, and you do get to the stage where you understand that, you know, the stick doesn't always work. Um, so my approach has changed as my career has moved through from um, the regulator to the private sector. And really now, what we understand is that good health and safety is, out, is an outcome of successful work. How well do we plan our day, um, have people with the right skills, give them the right resources? So we talk a lot about successful work because that's actually what we ultimately want to see. It's also a more positive way of looking at health and safety because instead of always focusing on the negative um, and people saying, oh, you've come to tell us that we're doing it wrong yet again, um, we're helping them to build on that, um, having a good day. So we've also got this uh, approach that we use in, in FISC I was going to point my laser at that, but that's not going to help you people, is it? Um, so this is a mindset model. So you'll see along the bottom axis, it talks about practices. So that's the stuff you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So you get in your car and you put on your seatbelt. 
up the other axis is mindset. That's what you think about why you're putting on your seatbelt. You know, are you doing it because someone else has told you to do it, you've been reminded by someone, or is it just something you do because you know it's actually one of the really good rules that's going to help you if someone else smacks into you? So that's the, the kind of thinking. And in the top, right, that the same. It is, isn't it? Sorry, so in the top right, you've got the people that I call committed and engaged. So they're the ones that their mindset is, they get it. They understand what having good health and safety is all about. Um, and they actually do it. And these are the people that have the successful work outcomes. Unfortunately, a lot of what we see in New Zealand and forestries um, in this place as well is the mindset's not there. They actually only do stuff because someone else has told them about it. And that makes them sit in the compliance space. And the problem with that is they very, very easily slip back into the non-compliant. So they stop doing it because nobody's watching. And then your other piece is you've got, the, I call them unsupported. So they've got the mindset, they want to be able to do the right thing, but they don't do it. And that's generally the environment that they work in that doesn't support them to do it. So the way that we work is we showcase the good stuff. So instead of focusing on the negative, it's actually capturing the stories of what's actually being done well in the sector. So if you're here thinking we've done something really, really good and you'd like to share it, please speak to me about it. Because um, we have a shortage of those case studies and it's not because there's not good stuff being done in the sector, it's just because no one wants to put their hand up and say, actually, I think we've done something quite well. So we showcase them, and that helps us convince and change the mindset of the people that are only doing it because someone else is telling them to do it. And it helps us support the others by giving them resources to say, actually, this is how you can do it. And then the bottom part, um, where people often want us to start and say we should work on the, that area, that's for our WorkSafe colleagues, that's their stomping ground, because they're the ones that have got the... Um, the enforcement powers and can change things in that way. So that's the kind of way that we work. We want to showcase the good stuff, which helps others learn. Um, I talk about the forest for the trees because often what we see is that, and, and I've seen it with the progression and the maturity of the sector as well, um, we focus on the individual, we focus on the worker. Um, and not so many years ago, it was very much a case of if you just, the workers would all follow the rules that we give them, everything would be sweet, we'd be hunky-dory. Um, the Independent Forest Safety Review, which was um, how FISC came about, did focus on contractors, so we're now working on contractor certification. But in actual fact, there's others in the supply chain that make a huge difference to what happens on site every day. And the people on site often don't have the wherewithal to be able to change those decisions that have been made. Um, so think infrastructure, skid design, um, where things were planted in the first place. Um, are we going to cable harvest or has someone decided we're going to ground base? All of those kind of decisions are made by the forest owner manager or even potentially the investor as well. So those are other areas that we look at. Um, it's good to get out and about and speak to people. And this slide actually came from a series of regional workshops that we did. And this was pretty much a consistent response from the attendees when we said to them, what makes a good day? Not one of them said, filling in paperwork um, or having a health and safety folder, but they talked about these things. So leadership, comms, having the right attitude and the culture within their team, having good people working beside them, so people that knew what they were doing, um, but also they recognised the health and wellbeing piece. So rocking up to work, fit to do the job, and that's on the inside and on the outside, so physically and mentally ready to do the work. And what's really good is these are things that we actually focus on in FISC, so it was nice to get that... Um, that verification that we were looking at the right kinds of things. So what are we actually delivering? So contractor certification. Um, a lot of people think this is just a prequal system, but in actual fact, it's a foundation building block. Um, 
It allows us to engage with the sector. It allows us to be able to recognise good contractor performance. It actually also allows us to access funding with um, ACC and WorkSafe um, to be able to develop further programmes. So when you look at the leadership piece in the middle, that's something that ACC originally funded, and we've still been able to um, access further funding from WorkSafe, and we're now actually with MPI doing some work in this space for other um, primary industries. And the key thing with that leadership training is it's been designed for kinesthetic learners. So there is none of this sat on your bum listening to people speak at you. It's actually physically doing things and being part of a team and it's gone down very well and I think along with Rady and Matariki who've picked this up thank you Fraser for the support there's probably been four or five hundred people in the sector have gone through this now um, and we will continue this program the other piece is worker certification um, we have highly skilled people in forestry um, and often I hear the words I'm just a bushman and I hate that term just a and you'll hear people use it in lots of professions um, our highly skilled people are professional at what they do and what we wanted to do was be able to recognize those people for when they were at the top of their game so worker certification is for people that are already got their level four quals and this is about continuing professional development and also um, demonstrating continued competency and it is an issue that we have with manual tree falling. So we want to take people off the hill and use more mechanisation. Um, how do we keep those manual tree fallers at the top of their game? Um, so that's a, an issue that we're dealing with. Um, we're also working very much on health, so physical health and mental health. Um, I think Dr Tom's going to be around at the conference. Um, there's a, a kind app. Um, that you can download for forestry. If you come and speak to me, I can give you the code for that. And the other piece is worker engagement. <coughs> Speaking to the people that do the job day in, day out is actually really important because we figure out then what, why do things go well? Um, and that's one of the areas that we're actually working on just now. It's going to be something that we hope to develop as a safe start resource and actually encourage people to do a debrief at the end of the day very much based on what the frontline people have told us what makes a good day. So how much of that was actually around? So we can actually start to look at what Health and Safety Geek Speak talks about as leading indicators, what's the positive stuff that we should be measuring instead of just the negative. And then the other pieces are in terms of the supply chain and that's recognizing again, it's not just the stuff that's on the site on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the planning that's done beforehand and the decisions that are made beforehand that really impact on what happens on site. Um, so these are projects that we have in train. Um, just reminding you that there is a supply chain involved in this and it's not just um, frontline workers. So this is just reminding people that we work in a high risk industry. Um, I mentioned that we still are top of the league, unfortunately, for fatalities in New Zealand. Um, and, you know, I think those, the things that kill us in the bush, I don't think that's going to be a surprise to anyone. Um, tree felling, breaking out, driving, um, man-machine interaction, maintenance, um, but also the health, physical and mental health as well. Um, and these have actually been confirmed by frontline people and the statistics. These are what we, we've identified as our real issues. So the areas that we continue to, to work on. But equally, the things in the office, you know, who's decided on where trees are going to be planted? Who's decided on the harvest methodology? Um, the commercial terms, some of the work that we're doing in conjunction with FICA just now are on contract. Um, so really looking at the other end of the supply chain that can influence those things. And economics, so fundamentally we work in a commodity market with the amount of um, you know, wood that's exported. That's what we're um, 
drives a lot of the decisions that are made in the sector as well. And that's where we see the kind of boom and bust piece. So it has a, it has a significant impact. But ultimately, what we want to be able to do is to make it a good day. Um, and that's actually down to all of us. So I've got some questions for you, even if you don't have any questions for me. Um, and those things are, what can you do now? You know, literally today, this evening, tomorrow, when you get back to work on Monday. Um, think about what else you can do. So you know you're in an environment where we've talked about connect for success. Hook up with other people find out what's going on and learn from each other. Um, and ultimately, what are you going to change? Because um, that's what's going to make the difference. So thank you very much. That's me. <laughs>